Hello guys and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program episode 18. I'm new new and let's get right to it. So first thing to do is get our people from here back to the space station. I basically plotted a course that would get my periaps a little bit inside the atmosphere here and I hope I'm not gonna re-enter fully. But first of all, the solar panels are gonna explode as you can hear or see. And now we're plummeting through the atmosphere, but with periaps high enough that we won't fully re-enter. This is just uh, to get the apparaps down enough so that I can rendezvous with my space station on the next flyby. I'm using a little bit of engine power here because I underestimated how how low I would get need to get into the atmosphere to make it viable and since my solar panels exploded I can't generate any electric charge anymore except with the engines so I don't want my orbital period to be too high so my people don't suffocate or no not suffocate freeze to death because they don't have any electric power to charge their heater and I also want to get this closest approach that is going around here as close as possible there we have it it's at 26 kilometers and now we're just gonna wait to apps and then make a little adjustment burn to bring our periaps up again there we go periaps let's get it up to 70 and this gets my close separation a little bit lower also and since my orbit is this far off I'm gonna need a lot of Delta V to actually rendezvous with the station but as you can see I have way more than enough left I think the rendezvous here will be about seven eight hundred meters per second something like that so let's do this once we get close we are just gonna burn like every other rendezvous with the big difference being that the relative velocity to the target as you can see is very very high so I need to burn for a long time of course you don't have to watch and sit through all of this I time accelerated it as always four times and now we're shooting past the station and we need to get ourselves into the right orbit. Come on, these engines are awesome in efficiency, but the power is not good. And now it's starting to overheat a little bit, but that's, that's gonna work because we're nearly there and we've got a closest approach. That's awesome. Now let's, I, I did a little bit of a bad thing here, a no-no thing in a few seconds. I time accelerated through this and there as you can see we shot past it because at the two kilometer marker it started loading and then it started lagging and by the time I reached the red button I was already past the station. So this approach now is a little bit fast and let's say unconventional but it works so now I don't use the engine anymore I used a little bit of RCS that I have left to get myself aligned with the docking port there we go and basically the reason why I'm going to the station at the moment is so I can funnel all the science I've got from Minmus through my science lab so the science lab will be more efficient and produce a bit more science. The other thing I noticed and I really really hate it is it's getting very very laggy here. You're not really seeing this in four times normal speed so once we're docked I'm gonna show you a little part 
when I take the science over to the science station. I'm gonna show you this part in normal speed so you can judge for yourself how laggy it is. There we go, we get our guy out of the cabin, get all the science and now we need to get over to this science station here. And as you can see this is normal speed, this is exactly the way it was on my computer, so this was lagging like crazy. So I decided I definitely need to upgrade my Kerbal Space Program to uh, version 1.12 or what, whatever the, the actual version is at the moment. So the second half of this video after this mission is done will already be with the upgraded version. That's also the reason why last week we had no episode. I recorded this part last week, then tried to upgrade it, but a lot of the mods weren't available yet, so I needed to wait a week. And now I think I've got nearly everything figured out. The only two things that I think aren't working perfectly are the tech life support. It says that it's there, I've got all the parts, but for some reason it's minus days and they're getting up and stuff like that, so the days aren't working I think they're not consuming right oh yeah here yeah, I'm, I'm just processing all the science for you and all the science that is processed and I can send down for the full science I'm sending down all the other stuff I'm just processing through the lab once and then we'll be returning to the station so I can talk about the conversion of my KSP version a little bit more so basically tech life support is still not perfectly working I'm trying to fix that at the moment and the second thing that's not working for some reason is remote tech which I'm really really sad about because I love the remote tech mechanics I love that when you send a probe to say Duna or Eve or even later Jewel something like that you've got this massive time delay so you need to plan ahead plan accordingly to your needs and if you want to get a remote lander to Duna you have to plan with the signal delay to basically arm and deploy the parachutes or some red pro thrusters and stuff like that so this is well it's it's bad that it's not working but I will do my best to get it to work for for the next video so for episode 19 it should be working again but now we get all the science back our science lab is now fully equipped with data we've got 500 of 500 there so this works perfectly and now we're just gonna undock our Minmos service module and deorbit it since I'm nearly at the night time, I did a little trick here to deorbit faster so you can watch my deorbit in the in the daytime here. Because if I just would have set my periaps and not burned a little bit downwards, I would have re-entered in the nighttime again. And so for you I did a little bit of maneuver to get me into the atmosphere fast enough so I will it will still be daylight and there we have it this basically normal the orbit mechanic this time the physics worked perfectly I perhaps start no it didn't work sorry as you can see I'm reloading here yeah that's bad and after reloading it started working for some reason in this version when I load the spacecraft and then enter an atmosphere, it just doesn't detect the atmosphere. But I hope this will also be gone with the with the switch over to version 1.1 something. And here we are gonna, of course, land near a mountainside. I hate mountain landings because they so often mess up your ship. You land on the side or stuff like that, like here, but luckily everything survived. And now we have got over 1500 signs or more, more to spend, oh sorry, no, yeah. 
and what do we want to spend it on? Let's see. Precision engineering I don't need. Let's see what else we have here. Actuators, no. Aerodynamics, uh, not yet. I'm not ready to fly planes yet. Advanced fuel systems, of course. RCS tanks and connector ports, good. Precision propulsion, nah. Not really needed at the moment. But nuclear propulsion looks good. And this gets me to the part. This gets me to a way of. Uh, on the way to nuclear reactors and stuff like that. So this is awesome. Yeah, this is gonna be nice. Nerva engines, nuclear engines. They are very efficient if used right. And of course, nuclear generators in the future will provide my people and everything with power on on very long missions or on missions far out of the solar system where the solar panels aren't working that good. Now, yeah, specialized control, of course, we get a few more RCS ports and the big wheel shields. Then, let's see, unmanned tech we can't get, but electronics looks good. A few more science experiments and scanners. Then get aerodynamics, get the landing legs for a little bit of stuff. And supersonic flight. Well, supersonic flight I think is the best one here to get. Because this one has the good engines and so I can try to build, maybe try to build the first SSTO in the future. And exactly 90 science left. What can we do with this? Storage technology maybe container tanks or miniaturization yeah, those are basically the only thing so let's get miniaturization and now we are in the second half of the video and as you can maybe see it looks a little bit different that's because we switched over to the newest version of Kerbal Space Program everything worked perfectly except remote tech as you can see here Sending a command, it's sending it with the right delay, but then nothing is happen happening. Or even though we have a connection. And the funny thing is, I can control the spacecraft without any signal delay. So if any of you have any idea why this is happening after converting my game, please leave a comment. I would really appreciate any info because I would really love to work with the remote tech again. Otherwise, I would need to find another tool like what I've installed now, the KOS, to script an autopilot and let the autopilot do the flying. But I don't really like scripting stuff, so well. Now, a new mission, and as you can see, we've got another bug. This was awesome. <laughs> Come on. As you can see, my launch clamps, for some reason, aren't decoupling. But they're also not stuck to the ground, so they fly with me up. Uh, they are rather stable, I would I would guess. But this was, this was just a very funny moment to see myself stage and poof for some reason my launch clubs don't detach they are not even anywhere in the in the staging windows to the left so I'm gonna have to find out what's going on with this this was this was the funniest moment I had while recording my interstellar missions as of yet and what basically now we are at four times normal speed again and what I'm basically doing with this is I'm sending it to Minmus to be a resource scanner because I haven't found the right version of Keythane for, for mining, which I used before. I'm now using Carbonite to be able to mine some stuff and later use Carbonite engines and Carbonite 
jet engines and stuff like that and carbonite scoops. So we're gonna send this mission to Minmus to see how how much of a carbonate con uh, concentration is there on the planet and to maybe in the next episode or in the future send a mission there to mine some carbonite, get it into orbit and basically make some refueling station around Minmus. And I also have plans to do an extra, extra planetary launch pad on Minmus. So I'm gonna need to scan for ore and stuff like that in the future. And hopefully we'll be able to launch whole rockets from Minmus's orbit or build whole things in Minmus orbit. So I basically would then Bear myself from having to use over 3000 meters of depth V to get to orbit in Kerbin, and basically, it's way cheaper than to build some stuff and send it to planets if we can do the mining right. The transfer to Minmus was pretty basic, I wanted to land there with a nice ferry apps, and now let's get this one on the road let's there we go time accelerate towards the node come on time acceleration and persistent rotation is interfering i need to adjust for that and get myself to the new node again there we go oh it's very dark here at night time but the silhouette i think looks pretty good yeah it looks pretty awesome so Let's get this thing to Minmus here. The large solar panels, they just look awesome on this little probe. And we are nearly done. There we go. Oh, this was too much. Two meters per second is a lot when going out to Minmus. And now let the magic of time acceleration do the rest. Come on, time accelerate. There we go get towards Minmus. The nice thing about getting he here like that is my orbit around Minmus is nearly in the exact inclination. Nearly I would say. As you can see I want a polar orbit so I'm just gonna have to burn a little bit like that. Works perfectly. And then get my periaps down to 100. Now next thing I'm gonna do is just circularize my orbit when I'm at periaps get down to get an apoaps also of about 100, 100 kilometers and that's basically it for this mission here and I hope I'll see you guys in the next episode when we try to mine some of this carbonite. Thanks for watching this episode of Kerbal Space Program. If you liked it, be sure to leave a comment or click that like button. And if you never want to miss an episode again, be sure to subscribe. I hope I see you guys next time.